Good morning, everyone. It's so great to have you join us again for today's devotional. And as we start, I want us to read from Psalm 57. And in verse 2, it says there, I cry out to God Most High, to God who fulfills His purpose for me. Verse 9, it continues on saying, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Let's take this time to pray. Lord, we just want to thank you for the God. That's the posture and declaration of our hearts that we start off this day giving thanks to you because of your steadfast love. And not only that, you have your plans and purposes laid out for us. And Lord, even as we continue to declare and acknowledge that over our lives, give us the grace, give us the will. Lord, allow our hearts to yield, to live for your purposes alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take this time to sing our praise and worship to God as we continue to declare that we would live alone for his purpose and His glory. Jesus, you are worthy of our worship. We glorify your name this morning. Thank you for being our comfort and strength during this time. We worship you. Come on, let's do this. Where you go, I'll go. What you say, I'll say. Let the whole world know of who you are. you say I 
nothing I want more To live for your purpose Cause you are my God And you love me most Nothing I want more To live for your purpose You say I'm yours And you love Nothing I want more to live for your purpose, Jesus. Sing it out. And you love me most. Nothing I want more to live for your purpose. Oh, we live for you, Jesus. Jesus, we live for you and you alone. Nothing will change that. Lord, we just pray that no matter what comes our way, no matter how uncertain these times are, you will keep our hearts burning for you. Lord, we ask that you meet us where we are today. Whatever we're feeling, whatever, whatever thoughts have crept in, we pray that your thoughts come in stronger. We pray that we glorify you this morning because that is what you are worthy of. You are worthy, Jesus. Let's sing this out. We enter in your hearts. Let every voice proclaim be in the name worthy oh heaven shouts your name creation sings your praise be enthroned in this place you are holy you're holy majestic creator you're perfect in every way The Alpha and Omega How awesome are your ways We bow down We cry out Life giver, redeemer, amazing is your grace. Full of wonder is your power, even angels can contain. We bow down. We cry out. Come on, let's sing this out. We enter in your gates. Let every voice proclaim. Be enthroned in this place. You are worthy. All oh, heaven shouts your name. Creation sings your praise. Be enthroned in this place. You are holy, oh, you're holy, life giver, life giver, redeemer, amazing is your grace, full of wonder. Is your power even angels can't contain? We bow down, we cry out. Come on, let's sing. We enter in your gates, let every voice proclaim. 
We just want to thank you for this glorious day, this awesome day to once again praise, honor, and glorify your name. Lord, we acknowledge your holiness. We acknowledge your majesty. We acknowledge your glory, God. And I pray that you would just cause us to all the more revere your name, offer right sacrifices before you. And at the same time, thank you for reminding us that despite of how awesome, how glorious, how majestic, how holy you are, you desire for each and every one of us to draw near to you. And right now, that's what we're doing. Lord, we're approaching your throne of grace confidently, not because of what we have done, not even because of what we can offer, but simply because of what Jesus did for us on the cross and that's what we're doing today we're approaching your throne of grace to receive your mercy and be reminded of your faithfulness Lord thank you for this awesome privilege to just draw near to you and enjoy this wonderful relationship with you in Jesus name amen Let's continue to be in an attitude of prayer as we declare this prayer from the Unite 714 movement with all our brothers and sisters all over the world as we desire to see God's deliverance from this COVID-19 virus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for planting us in your Father's kingdom. Through your great salvation, we have received the righteousness peace and joy we need to thrive in the midst of the trial and tumult currently shaking our world we ask that your divine peace will settle over our broken world and supernatural grace will sustain those who have suffered great loss during this pandemic father in the name of your son jesus we ask you to release your peace into our world to replace the panic 
release your comfort to alleviate the grief and sorrow in the hurting minds and hearts of mankind. Heavenly Father, we are also thankful for your promise to rebuild, repair, and raise up broken and ruined places. You are filled with compassion for the struggle of humanity. We are confident your heart has been moved by the devastation wrought by COVID-19. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we ask you to eradicate this virus, provide supernaturally for the many affected, and heal shattered hearts worldwide. Lord, wherever your kingdom is proclaimed and established, there is healing. As we approach Pentecost Sunday, we ask for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on your church and the world we have been called to reach. Grant us the boldness we need to clearly proclaim your world with power and confidence lord send a fresh outpouring of the holy spirit to embolden us to powerfully proclaim the message of the gospel we pray this in the name of your dear son jesus christ amen we're going to continue on gleaning from the book of Proverbs and we're actually on Proverbs 14 already. And if you look closely, you'd realize that there are 35 verses in that chapter. But we're going to focus on this particular verse that says, In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. Now, when you look closely at that statement, you might say, wait, 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 isn't that ironic? Because I see there are two words that doesn't necessarily go hand in hand. And I'm talking about the words fear and confidence because the things that you're naturally afraid of, you will not be confident to do. So how can you say that there's this fear that results to confidence when fear actually limits you from being confident? But Solomon in that verse reminds us and encourages us to have this kind of fear and he's talking about the fear of the Lord you see most of the time we have this negative notion about the fear of the Lord and because if it's somehow because we always equate fear with terror although that is true but if you look at the different accounts in the Bible you'd realize that it has nothing to do with God wanting to terrorize us or make us run away from him or make us run away and hide from him it actually you know the fear of the lord is actually brought about by god revealing how great how awesome how majestic he is it's about him revealing and allowing us to see who he really is his greatness and his majesty you see to fear god means to such have great respect and reverence for the Lord's power and righteousness because it's being revealed that we obey and treasure Him above all others. Not only that, you see, I want to share one of my favorite references of the fear of the Lord and it's found in Exodus 20. Now, most of us are familiar with that and it's about the Ten Commandments. Yes, it's about God giving the Ten Commandments to Moses and Moses giving it to the Israelites. Now, in verse 18 in the same chapter it says there now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking the people were afraid and trembled and they stood far off and said to moses you speak to us we will listen but do not let god speak to us lest we die moses said to the people do not fear for god has come to test you that the fear of him may be before you that you may not sin you know what happened the response of god revealing himself there are two responses that we can see here the next part of the verse says the people stood far off while moses drew near to the thick darkness where god was you see after revealing how holy he is through the law god's desire is for us to draw near to him just like moses but we read we realized in that account that when god reveals himself when god reveals his majesty his glory who he is there are are actually two responses just like that in that account you know the people imagine this would be these are the people whom god rescued from egypt they know god they both know god moses and the people know god they've experienced his miracles and yet the responses were so different the people it says there the people stood far off and said moses ikaw na lang ikaw na lang kumausap kay lord wag na lang kami kasi kasi we can't we can't endure it but moses 
after God revealing himself to to him actually to everyone be, through the law of yung how holy he is how great he is after revealing that Moses response was to draw near to him and you know thinking about this I realized what made the difference they both experienced God's provision they both experienced God's protection they both are aware and have experienced God's presence they are aware of God's promises but what made the their friends and I realized it is this Moses had that intimate relationship with God that when God chose to reveal himself even actually just a portion of him to him at that moment his response is not to run away from him but to come to all the more come near to him you see God revealed his glory his majesty and his holiness and the response that he wants from all of us the fear of the Lord that he wants the expression of that is for us to draw near to him you see the fear of God brings terror to those who are far off but is a source of confidence to those who have a relationship with him I don't know about you but that is such a comforting thought for me for those who have a relationship with God the more that God re- reveals himself the more that we know of his majesty his holiness the more that we revere him the more that we fear him and the irony about it the more that we get to know him we don't become familiar but the irony of it is that the greater the revelation that we have of that of God the more that we want to draw near to him and that makes us secured and confident imagine this with me the more that God reveals how great how awesome how mighty how big he is it allows us to all the more draw near to him come near to him you know run towards him and imagine this would be if you're with that big powerful great god i'm sure it could it would cause so much security and confidence in us now um if you look further at this verse we can see that solomon gave the premise for those who desire to have strong confidence and the confidence uh speaks of a certain degree of security that is why this verse is very interesting for me coming from him you know why if you look at solomon and and you know his life we know that he's the wisest man on earth during that time and his wisdom is not coming from the conventional wisdom of the world but it's actually you know um given by god and because of that wisdom he became one of the wealthiest men on on earth man on earth during that time and and silver was very common we would see that in the bible but not only that he gained influence he had a lot of seemingly great relationships he was so powerful and on the natural the things that solomon has power wealth influence seemingly great relationships wisdom saan ka pa diba nasa kanya na ang lahat all of those things can somehow be a source of security and confidence for him even even up to this time you know you see a lot of people you know investing their time their energy even their resources to attain all these things thinking that this can give them confidence but solomon having attained all of these things it's interesting that he did not mention any of those as the source of confidence not power not wealth not even wisdom but instead he said in the fear of the lord one has strong confidence imagine this would be the man who has experienced to have everything that the earth the world could offer material things that the world could offer said that there is nothing in those things that can make us confident that we that can make us secured but only in this if we have the fear of the lord and most commentators would say that solomon is also the one who wrote ecclesiastes and imagine this with me he said in ecclesiastes diba, that everything is meaningless under the sun that means everything that the world can offer is meaningless but the good thing about it is if you look at look at it he and ecclesiastes in this tone he said in chapter 12 verse 13 that the end of the matter all have been heard fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man you see at the end of the day solomon having gained all of these things realize that you can have all these things and yet it 
cannot make you secure. You know, there is nothing in these things that can make you confident. But at the end of the day, it's only the fear of the Lord that can make us have that strong confidence. You see, the next part of the verse says, And his children will have a refuge. We all know that Solomon wrote this proverb, one of the most confident kings ever. And I can assume that, you know, just like what we've said, his confidence is not based on wisdom, not, not in the things that he has. And the reason why he had that platform, why he can actually say that, is he knew and he saw a man live confidently who has the fear of God. And I'm talking about David. The reason why he had a platform like that the reason why he can have that refuge we know that he has experienced you know peace all throughout his life is because there's a man who went before him um who who ha, will live this out uh, the fear of who has who had that fear of the lord in him and he is actually benefiting from that you know i believe that solomon is writing this proverb as a beneficiary of what king david has done you know david lived in the fear of the lord that's why solomon can say that he had you know he is experiencing that great sense of confidence and refuge because of that fear of the lord and the same thing is true for us i want us to understand this that we are children of god and that is made possible because of what jesus did for us on the cross because of what jesus did for us on the cross we can have the refuge we can have the confidence and in response to that we can continue to fear the lord so my prayer is that we can have that assurance that we can actually have that sense of refuge in God because we know that we are children of God and that we would continue to live in the fear of the Lord because we know that that's the only thing that can make us confident in whatever we face in life. Let's just take this time to pray. Lord, I just want to thank you for this day. God, thank you for reminding us that you desire for each and every one of us to get to know you more, to have a revelation of how great, how awesome, how majestic, how wonderful you are, that you're in the business of revealing yourself to us. And in, in doing so, it instills the fear of the Lord in us. But God, thank you that you've not just called us to be your subjects, but you've called us to be your children, God. Lord, I pray that even today, you would just allow us to have that strong confidence knowing that we are your children that we are a part of your family that because of that we can come unto you god that because of that we can have strong confidence in you and we continue to declare that you have allowed us to also have the grace to live a life according to your ways in jesus name amen let's continue to be in an attitude of worship as we sing this song to god again we declare that you're glorious you're awesome and you're majestic and lord you deserve all the glory and all the praise and i pray that you would just continue to allow us to receive the grace to live as your children to continue on walking according to your ways in jesus name 
Amen. Now, I want to take this time to pray for a certain group of people. If you're tuning in for the first time or maybe you've been, you know, tuning in and, and following the morning devotionals and while uh, preaching and listening to this uh, devotional, you feel like, you know, I want to have that strong confidence, but I can't honestly say that I'm a child of God. You know, I can claim that because looking at my life i can't consider myself as a child of god you know i have great news for you now is the time you can be one and it's not because of what you can do but because jesus paid the way for us to be adopted into the family of god if you're that person you're saying god i want that strong confidence as well and i want to belong to your family i want you to lift your heart up to god and say the simple prayer with me Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. And God, I know that even today you're calling me to come home to be your child once again. And I put my full trust on what Jesus did for me on the cross that he took my sins and nailed it on the cross so that i can live a life that's full in you lord i receive your forgiveness i repent from all my sins and receive your forgiveness and i allow me to enter into your kingdom and be a part of your family in jesus name amen now if you pray that prayer i want you to know there's no magic to it but if you pray that sincerely i want you to know that god has welcomed you into his family and we welcome you as well into this family and if you need help in helping you grow uh, in your relationship with god please don't hesitate to contact any of the people that you know from victory or send us a message because we'd be so happy to help you in your journey so for every one of us us. I'm praying that all of us would have a great day and be, you know, confident that God has given us the grace to go through this season as children of God. Bye, guys. <laughs>